Amen. Amen. Well, today I've titled the message, In the Name of Jesus. Tell somebody, In the Name of Jesus. Not just the name of Jesus, but in. We'll be looking at that word, in. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. So I'm using the New King James Version. Auntie Ayo almost spoiled my whole life. Last week she came and talked about the Amplified Classic. And I used to use the Amplified, so I started going back to Amplified. And the Amplified, it can be long. <laughs> I was like, Lord, I think I'm preparing, I better go to the short version. So I went back to my King James. So Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 says, And whatever you do, in word or, in, or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Tell somebody, whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all. All means when you go to work, you go to work in the name of Jesus. You sit at your desk, sit at your desk in the name of Jesus. You are doing your washing up, you do it what? In the name of Jesus. If you are rebuking sickness in your body, in the name of Jesus. You are looking for husband, in the name of Jesus. You are looking for wife, open your eyes, man. Yeah. That's what one, even Jesus said, he's already done it. Just take off your glasses, look around, just thank Jesus. Just give him thanks in his name. But every single thing, choice man in the house. Don't shout me down. <laughs> but the Bible says, Every single thing you do, do it in the name of Jesus. Now, we'll see why this is so important and why this is so powerful. When you look at the word in, in the Greek, it's N, E-N, it talks about instrumentality. That means use the name of Jesus as an instrument. If you go to a tree, you're trying to push the tree down, you can't push the tree down. You take, you take a hacksaw, and a chainsaw, and just go through it easily. You use it as an instrument. You are progressing in life, you get to a wall, the wall is too wide, you can't go around it. The wall is too high, you can't climb. You try and push the wall down, the wall doesn't go down. You look around, there's a crane. You know the cranes with those metal balls? You have the key in your pocket. You just open the door, go in there, press one button, the ball swings them, boom, brings down the wall. Did you do it? No. You just use the crane as an instrument. That is what is talking about the name of Jesus. You don't need no strength. You don't need no mega faith. You know, when Jesus said you only need faith as a mustard seed, I thought, oh, Jesus, this one is not true. When we do things, you need some special faith. But he's talking about this. I can get a five-year-old, give them the key. They open the door. So long as they know what to do and just press it, the instrumentality will, will sort it out. This is what he's talking about, his name that use the name as an instrument in every single thing that you do. So now it's not you doing it. The instrument is actually doing it. So we'll look at what that name of Jesus can do today. Now when you talk about name, when somebody calls your name, whatever you're doing, you turn around. You can be extremely busy. As soon as you hear, you hear name be whispered, you turn around. Oh, are they talking about me? What are they saying about me? You immediately turn your face. So whenever you use the name of Jesus, Jesus must stop what he's doing and turn around. He will suddenly pay attention to you because his name has been mentioned. So then his name, whenever you call somebody's name, you actually bring the person into, onto the scene. The person says, what are people talking about? You, I heard my name. Do you need me? So as soon as you use the name of Jesus, he appears on the scene. Because the name, one of the primary functions of a name is to bring the whole person onto the scene. But the name is not just to call somebody. The name talks about authority. Now you go into your office, the chief executive has a name, the junior assistant who has a name. One name has more authority than the other name. It has a different rank. A general's name can command certain things. A sergeant corporal's name can command certain things. So a name also talks about authority. It talks about the character, the power, the rank, and the excellence. There are different names in this world. If I call one name, headache, you'll be like, hmm, that's easy. You've got another name, paracetamol. It solves that name. I call a name, flu. You think, oh, that one's not too hard. I've got another name, nightness, dayness. It solves that problem. Every, if I keep pushing it up and up and up, you will start getting names. But you get to a certain point, you run out of names. When you call death, there's no name. The doctors just back off. 
In fact, some diseases, when you call it, the doctors just back off. They say, go and prepare to meet death. But there's a name. There's a name that's above all names. There's a name that solves every single problem. That everything must bow to that name. Everything must back off to that name. So let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11, where it tells us about that name. So Philippians 2, 5 to 11. So let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of a cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So God has given Jesus a name that everything has to bow to that name. Before, not everything bowed to that name. Jesus had to come and do something. Before Jesus came, when man fell, we had to bow to everything. When sickness came, you had to bow to it. In fact, when you read the Old Testament, there are very few cases of people being healed. Very, very few cases. So they all had to bow to that name. But in the New Testament, any name that comes up, the name of Jesus overcomes it. Somebody was dead four days, that name brought him back out. In fact, I was reading one book about this man of God. He said his Sunday school coordinator was working somewhere, fell down on machinery, and his body was broken badly. They took him to the hospital. The doctor said, this one, we don't know. He's going. So he was praying in the name of Jesus. The man died, went to heaven. He said when he got to heaven, he saw Jesus, he was so happy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We were worshiping Jesus. And Jesus said, oh, you have to go back to earth. He said, no, 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 Jesus. And that's one thing. When somebody dies, don't feel sorry for them. Feel sorry for yourself. <laughs> it's true. We are the ones who are going to miss them. You miss their company. You miss their presence. Yeah? And sometimes if they are a breadwinner, you also miss their finances. But really speaking, for them, they are not missing anything. The man said he did not want to come back. He told Jesus, no, he was arguing with Jesus. Can you imagine arguing with Jesus in heaven? He said three times, Jesus said, you have to go back. He said, no, I don't want to go back. And Jesus called him, pulled open a curtain. He said, you see, you see that person, he's praying for you in my name. So you have to go back. Because he had used the name of Jesus. And because he was premature death, he had to go back. So that name overcomes any single thing that happens in this world. He said, everything has to bow. That means it has to bend. Everything must confess, must fully agree. So today, when you go home, call some names. You know those names that have been harassing you all around the place? Line them up. You say, hey, you, 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 yes, you. That stupid bill that you'll be harassing me every month. Come and stand here. That sickness, you come and stand here. Line them all up and start to speak to them. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, start to command them. Everything has a name. Trust me. When Jesus spoke, he spoke to the fig tree. The fig tree had him. The fig tree had him. So things, remember, everything is made by the word of God. So everything is living. We human beings say, oh, rocks are not living. The Bible says if we don't praise God, the rocks himself will praise God. That means they can hear, they have a voice. Everything has a voice. So line them up. You know, you have to be deliberate about things. When you've been a Christian too long, sometimes you can become blasé. You know, if you've been a Christian 10, 15, 20 years, when sickness hits you, you know the first thing you do. Oh, God, why me? I'm serious. Because when you get to a certain level, you think you should be untouchable. That these sort of things must not happen to you, as if you have some special privilege. So when it happens to you, you get a bit confused. Don't be confused. Line them up. Tell them, today I'm going to deal with all of you one by one. And show them, open the scripture, and tell them, have you seen this one? Because we'll, we'll look at it. If I, let, me, let me tell you this story. There's a difference between authority and power. Yeah. So we had the U.S. president come here, didn't he? I don't want to mention his name. Last time I was insulting him. So if I go to America, they might not give me a visa. <laughs> he came here. You, we could consider him as the most powerful person on this planet. I mean, he can send the CIA to you and you're gone. 
He can order airstrikes and everything. But when he, when he came to this country, he could not tell the police people what to do. He had no authority, no jurisdiction to operate. When you look in the Garden of Eden, God gave Adam authority over the earth. When the devil came and, and Adam submitted to him, the Bible says, whoever you obey becomes your master. So you obey the devil, the devil became the master. God didn't come and say, hey, stop that, you stupid devil. Give me back the thing, I'll give it back to Adam. Even though God had all the power, he did not have authority to operate. But also, when you have authority, please get some power. I'll tell you why. In my school, I teach six formers. When I tell them, go, they go. When I say, come, they come. Because they know I mark their papers. <laughs> so when you ever say, go, you don't go, I give you one look. So, so, sorry, sir, I'm going. And they'll go. But six form, I finish early. And so then I go and work supply chain in a school. They have the year sevens, year eight, year nines. 11, 12, 13 year old people. I walk into the class with full authority. Sit down, they stand up. Keep quiet, they start shouting. Don't kick that chair. I tell them don't kick that chair. They look at you. Then they kick the chair. <laughs> what are you going to do? Why? Because in the school system now, no power. You can have all the authority you like. You don't kick it and say, what are you going to do to me? What can you do to me? So you need to get some power. That's why, you know, Jesus gave the disciples the name. <laughs> You're laughing. So, you see, this, there are some small, small, year seven, year eight, nine, year nine demons walking around harassing your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pastor Cole come to teach about spiritual warfare. When, when you read people about spiritual warfare, apparently, the principalities and powers, they obey you. When you tell them, in the name of Jesus, do this, they know the power, they walk around. There's small, small demons running around there. When you tell them, in the name of Jesus, they say, what? The man, the man with all the demons, and he called their name. Jesus said, go out. They said, oh, please, 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 send us into those streets. We don't want to go. What nonsense is that? Jesus told you, go. Just go. They were now back with Jesus. No, 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 no. Please, send us to those. These are small, small demons. They just like to harass your life. They don't want to go. So <laughs> you need to tell somebody you need to get some power. Uh, get some power. So before, before Jesus went, he was with his disciples. The disciples were still casting out demons and everything. But before he went, he said, wait until you are endued with power from on high. Wait for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, so with the speaker, well, where you speak in tongues. If you've never done it before, you don't speak in tongues, please, at the end of the service, come to the front. So I will pray for you, and today you will receive it. You'll be filled with power. Because you must exhibit some power to actually do it. Because we have the authority. So all authority is in the name of Jesus. But notice how he got it. He says in verse 8, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him. Mr. and Mrs. Christian, be humble. God is showing you these things. If you are not humble, God will not exalt, exalt you. The Bible says, first be obedient to God before you can go and sort out all disobedience. Because if you go and tell them, in the name of Jesus, do this, in the name of Jesus, do this, those small demons, they are very cheeky. They look at you and say, ah, but you are not humble. You are like us. Come and join us so that we'll be disobedient to God. Why are you standing on that side? Come with us. You are like us. So you have to be humble. Huh? I mean, Pastor Jim was talking about working in the house. We have set up team. Nobody joining. Everybody picks up their bus. Going home. You have to do things in God's house. If you cannot humble yourself and say, I'll come early to help. I will stay late to help. That means even before God, you do not, in my country they say, you do not book God. You do not respect him. You are not showing him the reverence. To say, that in your house, I will humble myself. That's what Jesus did. God needed somebody to come and save man. He could have sent one of his angels. He just said, no, I am God. But I will strip off and I will go down there and do the, the, the menial task. Because it's a menial task. I will do the menial task. And because of that, God has also what? Highly exalted him. Yeah? This is very, very important. Because two of Jesus' disciples, John and James, they want to see Jesus. Jesus, Jesus we want to sit at your left and at your right. They said, oh, you want that? Can you do all this? They said, yes, we can. Jesus called all his disciples. All right, you can do all this powerful stuff. But he says, to be first, you have to be last. Jesus said, I washed your feet. 
I, Almighty God, washed your feet. If you want to be the first, do the things nobody wants to do. The things that are hidden. When nobody will see you and say, oh, you've done a good job. Nobody sees you. You just do it. Nobody will talk about you. Nobody will say anything about you. But God sees you. The, way, the same way God saw Jesus, the same way God will see you and highly exalt you. So, you know, we are talking about all these powerful stuff. You can do this. Ask anything in God's name. He'll give it to you. But there are certain little, little things you have to do for all these things to manifest. So we have to be very careful that we do that. Yeah, but so we know that Jesus has the name above all names. All authority has been given to him. If we go to uh, Matthew 28, verse 18, that's when he tells his disciples. Uh, Matthew 28, 18. Let's read that in the Amplified Classic. Yes, blame I.O. So 28, 18, so this is when he had died, rose again. He says, Jesus approached them and breaking the silence said to them, all authority of power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So that is where he got it. But now, let's look at who this Jesus is. Yeah, because sometimes, I don't know about you, we're all human beings. We know that when somebody says, this is my father. Let's be honest, the father is bigger than the son. No matter how you look at it. The father has more authority than the son. The father owns the house. The son just eats the food, doesn't pay any bills. We have that in the mouth. So even though we say Jesus is God, because we have been brought up in this world, inside our spirits, we always see the son as something slightly inferior to the father. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. So we'll see who Jesus actually is. So Isaiah tells about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Isaiah 9, verse 6. So he was talking about Jesus. He says, for unto, us, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So you see Jesus' name. If I want you to look at it closely, wonderful counselor, who does that remind you of? The Holy Spirit. Mighty God, everlasting Father, who does that remind you of? The Father. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Everything that I do, my Father in me, what? He does it. So when you see the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, he's the Son of God. He was born by God, but that is Almighty God walking around. The fullness, we look at it, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. When you see Jesus, the whole Father is in him. The whole word of God is in him. All the whole Holy Spirit is in him. So when we talk about the name of Jesus, we are talking about the name of Almighty God. Don't think the name of a man who God has exalted slightly a bit. This is the name of Almighty God. And the, the Jews always understood it. We, when we hear son of, we always think of somebody smaller. The Jews understand this. Let's look at John chapter 10, verse 33 to 36. Is there any Jewish person here? Okay, spiritual Jews, huh? <laughs> yeah. But sometimes you should speak to a Jew, a Jewish person, and say, I was ministering to a Jewish person. So I was talking, talking, talking. And I said, so what, this whole thing, what is that about? He said, oh, don't I know? He said, at the end, God will come kill all of us and give the whole earth to the Jews. It's true. And that's what we believe, that in the end, everybody goes away, born again people. They have seen that at the end. Of so I, him, I told him, oh, but you should come born again because I'm a son of God. The way he looked at me, I had to step backwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because when I read the scripture, then I understood why he looked at me that way. John 10, 33 to 36. So, oh, let's, look at, let's start from 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. They are so quick at that. Then Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shown you for my father. Which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. For, for, but, do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because you, being a man, make yourself God. 
Because if you look at verse 36, it says, Do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent to him into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God. So when Jesus said to them, I am the Son of God, they knew what he meant. They knew that he meant that he saying, I am God. Emmanuel, God with us, walking on this earth. So when we are using the name of Jesus, realize we are talking about Almighty God's name, the fullness. Now just to prove to you, I'll talk about the fullness of the Godhead. Colossians 2, 6 to 10. That's where it talks about that the fullness of the Godhead. We are talking about the Father, the Word, the Spirit. The fullness dwells in him bodily, fully bodily. So when Jesus is walking around, this is almighty God walking around. And when you look at that verse, it says for the church. Remember something. Jesus did not do anything for himself. He said, in the beginning, I was with the Father. In the beginning was the word. The word was what? God. Does God need more power? He doesn't need more power. Does God need more authority? No. The main reason Jesus came to get it is to give it back to man. Because now we are part of his, his body. So now we've seen who Jesus is. Let's look at why that name is so powerful. How did he get it? Because really, if you look at the name of Jesus, you go to South America, people are called Jesus. In fact, the name Jesus, the, the Jewish people call it Yeshua. I think it's Joshua. But let's see why his name is so powerful. How did he get his name? So the first way he got that name was by inheritance. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. We see how he got that name, Jesus. So Hebrews 1, 1 to 5. So God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself perished our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So it seems as if the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost had a certain authority there, which was above everything in heaven, everything in hell, uh, on earth, everything in hell, and when Jesus, the word, came into being, was born here, did everything, died, rose up again, because that's when Jesus, uh, God said, this day have I begotten you. The day he rose up again, that authority was given to that name. So he has what? Inherited that name by inheritance. Let me ask you something. You and Jesus, do you know that you are joined heirs? You are joined heirs in Christ. Pastor Jane was just saying that she went to Harold's. Poor oh, Pastor Kofi. Why? They have a joint account. <laughs> if you, <laughs> joint heirs is different from co heirs. If, if you are co heirs, you know, your, your, your parents leave your will. They say, okay, we'll give it to both of you. You have 50%. They have 50%. Joint heirs, not 50 50. Pastor Jane went there and just signed the check. Any amount you sign, they'll take it. So it means 100%, 100%. Everything that Jesus has 100%, you have 100%. So if Jesus has inherited the name, that means you have inherited that name. That means all authority, all power has been conferred unto you. Amen. That's why the prayer in Ephesians chapter 117 is so important. It says that the eyes of your understanding will be flooded with light. So that you will know the riches of the glory of the inheritance in all the saints. It is already yours. But now you have to know it. So that's the first way he got it, by inheritance. The second way, we, we saw the second way in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11, and that because of what he did, so it was like a reward. Because he stooped so low, God also raised him up so high. And so it was given to him as a reward. And if we look at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20 to 22, We'll see what that name represents. So verse 20 says, Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, 
far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And when you read on, it talks about that we've been made to sit with Jesus at the right hand of God. That means we are far above all principalities and powers. And in using that name, that's why the first thing we started was everything you do, do it in the name of Jesus. I'm sure some people will say, oh, but I've been praying in the name of Jesus all this time. It doesn't work. And sometimes, you know, after a while, it's like hit and miss. Some prayers you pray happen, some doesn't happen. I think, God, did it happen because you heard me or it was just going to happen? You don't know. But that's why the message is coming to you. Because it says that you will know. With light, you do more. Greater light, you do greater things. So the more you study it, the more you meditate on it, the more you get results. As for being true, it is true. It is written, and so it is true. So that's the second way. The third way is the choice man's way. Choice man's the house. The third way was by conquest, by fighting. <laughs> Colossians. <laughs> where's, where's Anthony Joshua? Oh, sorry, the young people beat me. <laughs> Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. So we know Jesus came on this earth. He did everything that God told him to do. Then he died and went to hell. Then in hell, when he got to hell, I'm sure the demons thought, ah, at last, we've got him. Adam came, we defeated Adam. God says this is the last Adam. If we can defeat this one, everything's close. And they had killed him because they had been trying to kill Jesus all the time. They couldn't kill him. Now he was dead. And remember, before Jesus, nobody escaped death. Abraham, God's friend, died when he was in hell. David was in hell. Elisha was in hell. I think only Moses got special permission to go to heaven. But everybody was contained by death. So when Jesus died, they thought, we've done it. Sometimes, I don't know if these demons, if they don't read the Bible. <laughs> I don't know about you. But sometimes I think, if I was a demon, I would secretly, when the other demons are not looking, Secretly go to God and say, oh God, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> that devil deceived me. I hadn't seen you before. Because you know, we think they see God. I don't think they see God. The Bible says they believe that is there. When you read the Bible, it's not as if every angel can go up to God and say, hello, sir. No, 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 no. There are cherubims and seraphims surrounding him. So even Gabriel boasted. He said, I stand in the presence of God. That was his highest boost. So first the demon, I said, God, I'm sorry. I never saw you before. I didn't think you were there. Please forget, forgive me. Let me become an angel. But it seems they still want to persist. When they got Jesus, they thought, we have got him now. But see what happened. Verse 14. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and was taken, he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle over them, triumphing over them in it. He actually beat death up. He beat sickness up. Poverty he triumphed over. So that's why Jesus I have means you have also overcome them. Because after all, you are part of the body of Jesus, aren't you? If the head overcomes something, doesn't the arm overcome it? Can the arm be sick and the head says, no, we are healed? Everything works together in unison. So whatever Jesus has triumphed over, you have triumphed over them. But now you need to exercise your authority. And you need to stand your ground. Like I was saying, those small demons who think that they can keep harassing you, you need to stand your ground. You need to enforce it. The onus right now is on you to do it. Because like we can see, God has done everything. The Bible says he's delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And we also know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers. Your fight is not with a human being. One of the major ways for your faith to work, you have to walk in love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, if you had faith 
so that you could even move mountains and you do not walk in love, you are what? Nothing. Look at the verse carefully. He says, if you have faith, so you could. He didn't say you are. So if you have great faith that you could do something, if you are not walking in love, it won't happen. Yeah. He says you could. You must walk in love. The people in your office who are harassing you, don't tell them, no, you don't know that I'm a Christian. you see what God will do to you. I'm telling you this because I was like that. I was an Old Testament Christian. And in the Old Testament, you don't mess with men of God. If you mess with them, have you read the story of Elisha? Young boys, small boys, oh, not grown men, were laughing at him. Call him, oh, you bald man, you don't have hair on your head. They're laughing, ha, 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 ha. He looked at them. Bears came out from the, book, from the bush and killed them. Yeah. <laughs> you are saying, wow. <laughs> In the Old Testament, you don't mess with men of God. But this is the New Testament. If you do grace, truth and grace came by Jesus. When they were killing Jesus, he didn't command fire from heaven down to them. What? Father, forgive them because they know what to do. You must walk in love. Jesus says what? Love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that persecute you. It is an action. At first, I thought it was passive. I thought, well, somebody's done something to me. Oh, it's okay. Nothing. I just woke up. No, no, no. He says, do good. Somebody does something to you, buy them a box of chocolates and give to them. Yes. <laughs> I, think, I think there's another Old Testament person back there. <laughs> I bought a box of chocolate and, and put some things. <laughs> you know, when we were, I was in boarding school in Ghana. And when you were in Form 1, Form 2, you know, 11, 12 years old, the seniors are always sending you. Go and get me this. Go and get me this. Go and get me this. Then they'll take your food. Hey, coffee, bring it. So do you know what we used to do? Go and get me water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Senior, I brought you the water. Thank you. Then he drinks it. <laughs> then we had it together and laugh. I, I, that was, I was Old Testament. Now I'm New Testament. <laughs> I have changed. <laughs> I've come for many prayer meetings and I have changed. <laughs> But do an action. Somebody at work slights you, disrespects you a little bit, pray for them. Put it to action. Yeah? Do good, pray for them, so that your faith, because faith works by love. Yeah? So faith works by doing good to people who haven't done good to you, by praying for people who have disrespected you, and by being kind to people. You must put it to action. Because if you're not doing that, you can't tell me, Everybody in this world loves you. You are lying. You are lying. Everybody in this world doesn't love you. In fact, at work this time, I'm a bit lax with the students. So they come to the end, and they are over 18. So they come to the end of the term, I was marking their papers because we marked their papers. So they came to class, I said, no, 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 go, go away, go away, I'll mark your papers. So they went away, and I marked the papers. Then somebody went to tell the principal, oh, he said, let the students go away. And blah, 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 blah. So I was there. They called me. Vice president called me. I said, yeah, how? I said, read this letter first. I thought, okay, right? <laughs> always, always the optimistic chap, eh? <laughs> Open it. You have been allegedly blah, 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 blah. I said, oh. I couldn't remember, actually. I said, oh. So they said, did you send email? I said, I don't know. I said, here's my computer. I can check. I was open with him, showed him everything. Up to today, I've not heard from them. I've not heard anything from them. I went. At first, I wasn't going to do anything. I thought, this gear. I thought, no, do good to them. So I went to our sky to In fact, now when I go back, I'm going to buy a box of chocolates. <laughs> Seriously, I'll buy a box of chocolates and the vice principal will buy a nice bottle of wine. For you religious Christians, think of it as grapefruit juice. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you drink it or you don't drink it, God doesn't care. <laughs> I'll buy him something. Yeah? Because now I've been reading a book, How to Walk in Love. It says, don't just say, oh, Father, forgive me and walk away. No. Do something good. Walk in love. So I've said, okay, I'm going to do it. Because I want to be the person, when I use the name of Jesus, it works. Yeah. I don't want those little demons to say, but he didn't walk in love. He's just like us. No more, it don't work. I don't, want to, I don't want those harassing little people walking around. So I must be fully obedient to God so that I can sort out all disobedience. Yeah, so, so make sure that you walk in love and do the actions of love. So those are the three ways Jesus got it. By inheritance, by bestowal, and by conquest. 
And like we said, he told us, let's look at baptism, because some of you have been baptized, some of you have not been baptized. I think it's good to baptize yourself, oh. <laughs> Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 19. We'll read that in the Amplified again, so we had a look at it, but we'll look at it again. Matthew 28, 18 to 19, in the Amplified Classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm preaching for like 10 hours. Every verse takes. It says, Jesus approached them and breaking the silence said to them, all authority, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go then and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So into the name of God. He said, baptize them into. Baptism is fully being immersed into something. So that means if you're a Christian, you've been fully immersed into the name of Jesus. You are covered wall to wall with the name of Jesus. That's why it says everything you do, do it in that name. Because if you don't, it's almost as if you are stripping yourself out of the name and going by yourself and trying to do it by yourself. And you've left your name behind. Yeah, so we have actually been baptized into. So here it says the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But just to prove to you that this is the name of Jesus, go to Acts 19. Verses 3 to 5. Acts 19, 3 to 5. So I think this was Paul. Paul went to Corinth. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of who? The Lord Jesus. So when Jesus said, baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we see what name that is. The name of Jesus. The name of God himself. So if you are a Christian, you have been baptized into that name. That name covers all of you. I'm not saying go and leave your father's name. Use your name. But everything that you do, it, do it in the name of Jesus. Now, we look at two main ways to use that name. The first one is in prayer. Let's go to John chapter 16, verses 23 to 24. And we had prayer evening last, last night, um, Friday night. I didn't even see you. Where are the young people? You spoke on Thursday. This, we all said, yeah, 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 yeah. Are you old people laughing? You went there. <laughs> <laughs> John 16. So we look at using the name in prayer. John 16, 23 to 24. It says, And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever. Tell somebody whatever. whatever. Ask somebody, is sickness whatever? <laughs> is wealth whatever? Is that promotion you want whatever? Is that husband whatever? You ask the father in my name, he will what? Give it you. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. So Jesus has given us a blank check. So whatever in his name, in his, so in his character, that means you can't ask something out of God's will. Whatever is in Jesus' character, whatever he has authority over, which is everything, yeah, whatever is good for you, if you ask it in his name, he says what? He will give it to you. Let me ask you something. If your hand is cold and your hand needs a shed, what will you do? You put clothes on. If your mouth is thirsty, what will you do? Give water. If your shoes are worn out and your legs are hurting you, what will you do? Buy new shoes. Will you ever deny yourself anything? No. You won't deny yourself anything. As long as it's healthy for your body, healthy for you, you will not deny yourself anything. Why will God deny himself something? You are the body of Christ. Christ is the head. You are God's body. He says the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Christ. You are Christ. Almighty God dwells in you. Some of us are his hands. Some of us are his legs. Some of us are other parts. Why will he deny you something that is good for you? 
The Bible says he will never ever deny himself. 2 Timothy 2.13. He says, God cannot deny himself. So whenever you're asking anything in the name of Jesus, and you're part of the body of Jesus, God must give it to you. That means you must be fully assured that whatever I have asked, God definitely has given it to me. Like they said, if you've asked God for something and you haven't got it, it is not from God's end. Put it in your mind that, as for that, God has given it to me. It must be this end somewhere. Is this something I have not done? Something I need to do? Or do I just have to wait? Find out. That's what the book of James says. If you're going through a trial, ask God for wisdom. Insight into what's going on. Because if it is sickness and you've asked God for healing, you must put it into action. You must either jump out of your bed, try to walk, or do something extra. If it is wealth that you've asked for, and I'm sure all the young people here, they've asked for wealth. One, if it's wealth that you've asked for, God has given it to you. So that means you are wealthy. So don't say, oh, when will God make me wealthy? He's made you wealthy. But now you need to do the actions. Like Pastor Jane was saying, come to the forum, learn how to what? Save, invest money, give tithes and offerings, tithes and offerings, and save. Don't spend all your money. I'm sure the young people are looking at me like, save, what is that? With pretty little thing, ASOS, and there's a, there's a new one. I saw it first. It's, it's like every week I'm driving around, there's a new clothing company. I said, these young people are in trouble. Though. My house today, my son came to the house. I said, no, it was my daughter. Have you seen the package that has come? Has it come? I said, no, no package has come. Every day in my house, one or two packages come. <laughs> I'm like, ah, what are you people going to? Every day, it's just this, that, that. Yeah? But save money because you are already wealthy. Once you have asked God for it, Jesus is saying, if you've asked God in the name of Jesus, it is done. Now you need to find out the actions that you have to do. Yeah, so in Acts chapter 4, verse 24 and 30, I'll just tell you, tell you because time is running out. They pray to God, Acts 4, 24 down to 30. They pray to God that God should move, signs and wonders should happen. God should heal the sick in the name of Jesus. So once they are prayed, they knew that they had got it. So that's the first way to do it. Now, after you have prayed, there's the second part of using the name of Jesus. Let's go to John chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. To John 14, 12 to 14. It says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He didn't say if you pray to God. The word ask there is also demand. If you demand something to happen in my name, Jesus said, I will do it. He didn't say God will do it for, for you. Look at this illustration. Because sometimes we all think, I don't have the faith. I'm not so powerful. I can't do this. Imagine Jesus in today's um, setting. Jesus is your friend. You have him on mobile phone, Instagram. You think Jesus will be on Instagram? Okay. On Insta what about Facebook? <laughs> Last week, you drove Jesus to Milton Keynes for him to minister. You came back home. You had a barbecue with a few friends, and you took him home. You're like that with him. They call you on the phone. Your loved one is very sick. Very, very sick. And I say, we love her, very sick. You better come and see them now. We don't know. What would you do? Would you go, oh, God, oh, no. Where's your sickness from? Would you do that? No. You tell them, oh, don't worry. You call Jesus up. Jesus, I have this problem. Can I come pick you? Jesus says, yes, come and pick me. You drive to Jesus. Jesus sits in your car. As you're driving along, they call you up. There's, they are crying. They say, oh, forget it. The person's dead. Oh, the person's so dead. And what would you do? Will you go, oh, no, oh, God. Will you start to comfort them? No, you tell them, don't worry, don't worry, I've got Jesus here. He said, I'm not saying Jesus is coming. I said, I've got him in my car. So don't worry. Jesus will ask you, what did they say? He said, oh, he's sleeping. Don't worry, Jesus, he's sleeping. You will now start talking faith to Jesus. Why? Because you have faith in Jesus. When you go to the place, you pick up Jesus' Bible, you'll be walking with a swagger. You, you'll be fully confident. Jesus is walking by Bible. You'll be fully confident. People will cry and say, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You'll be confident. Don't, fully confident, don't worry. You get to the room, people can say, no, don't worry, don't worry. 
And you know Jesus' mode of operation. So you tell them, oh, please leave the room. So please leave the room. When you leave the room, you are Jesus there. What are you going to do? I'm sure you just raise up your hand. Thank you, Father, that Jesus is my friend. Thank you so much, Lord, that I can call on Jesus when you come. Why? Because you know Jesus' word. Do it. If it was only you and the person praying, would you, you think, oh, I don't have the faith to pull the person from heaven. But if Jesus is on your side, can you have faith in Jesus to do it? Yes. As for that faith, you only need a little bit of faith. This is what the name of Jesus does. Jesus says, whatever you shall demand in my name, I will do it. Not you will do it. Not your faith of asking the Father to do it. I, is the, I am the person who will actually do it. Everybody can have faith in that. So that means anything you want, if you say in the name of Jesus, this must happen, Jesus is the one who's doing it. It is not your problem. Just have faith in the name of Jesus. And we'll see how uh, the apostles use this. If you go to Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 8 and 16. He's talking about Peter and John. So Peter and John are walking, are going to see a lame person. The lame person is sitting there. The lame person says, please give us money. I want money, I want money. Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But let's see what he said. In verse 6, six, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Do you see what Peter said? He says, I have the name. Because why? He had been baptized into the name. So that means he carries the name. It was his to use as he wanted to. And he, told, he didn't pray to God, Father, please heal this person. No, 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 no. He says what? In the name of Jesus. He placed a demand for it to happen. What? It happened. I'm sure you have said to me, oh, yes, yes, yes. But Peter is an apostle. Great faith to do that. Let's look at somebody else. Luke chapter 9. Because sometimes when we read the Bible, it's like, okay, those people had great faith, so they could do these things. Let's look at Luke chapter 9, verse 49. Luke 9, 49. Now, John answered and said, Master, we saw someone. Turn to somebody and say, are you someone? Look at someone else and say, are you someone? Tell them, they are talking about you in the Bible. Oh. <laughs> you didn't think you were in the Bible. You are in the Bible. He says, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbid him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is on our side. Someone. He wasn't part of the disciples. He wasn't part of the followers. They didn't even know him. But he had, evidently, he had come to one of Jesus' meetings, believed in Jesus. Here Jesus says, if you use my name, it will definitely work. Went out, he was using it, and was casting out demons. Someone. You can be born again today. End of this week, you'll be laying hands on people with cancer, and you'll be healed. It is that easy. It just, Jesus was on this earth for three and a half years. That means this someone, it might have been a few weeks. Because he, was, he might have just seen Jesus one week, Believe Jesus. Oh, this thing is true. I believe in Jesus. Went doing it and was producing results. The disciples didn't even know the person. So don't think these things demand great faith, great this thing. All this, Jesus said, have faith in me. If you can have faith in me, I am the one who will actually do it. Because, you know, as he says in Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 20, he says, in my name, you what? Cast out demons. You will heal the sick. All the things that Jesus can do and did, he's saying in his name, you can do it. So I'm sure that from now, you can line up all those little demons and discipline them. Just call them out and know that as you are using that name, what? Jesus does it. So one, we pray to God in the name of Jesus. Once we have prayed, we know God has given it to us. Now we go and take action in the name of Jesus. You need to take that action because as for God, once you have told him about it, he has given it to you. 
So in closing, let's look at Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Romans 5, 17. So he said, for if by the one man's offense, so Adam, death reigns one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. How? By using his name. So the grace has been given to you. That's, this is what grace is about for free. It has been given to you to go and reign over your finances, reign over your body, reign in your career. How? By doing everything that you do in the name of Jesus. And the last verse, Hebrews 13, 15, it talks about how we should worship God. So Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. It says, therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So God is saying, even his name, we must give thanks to his name. So somebody just raise up your hands and just, just start giving thanks to his name. Start thanking Jesus for his name. Start thanking the name of Jesus. If we stand up, we're going to worship his name for a while. We're going to put it to practice. So stand on your feet. What a wonderful name this is. What a powerful name this is. Giving you the name of Jesus.